Each new block is then added to a chain. Thus, you have the blockchain. Imagine a record of every transaction of pound sterling that has ever taken place. In exchange for mining a block and solving a math puzzle, you are rewarded with a set number of newly created bitcoins. Computers, i.e. miners, all over the world are all competing to mine a block and receive the Bitcoin reward. The computer that mines the block and solves the puzzle first receives the Bitcoin reward. Okay. Then the race to mine the next block begins. A block is mined every 10 minutes. The network automatically adjusts the difficulty of the math puzzle in order to maintain an average of six blocks per hour. If blocks are solved quickly, puzzles are made to become more complicated and vice versa. Bitcoin is a deliberate digital replication of the physical mining process of gold. Early bitcoins were easy to mine, so is surface gold. There were fewer transactions to verify, so ordinary PCs had enough processing power to do this. As the mine goes deeper underground, it becomes more expensive and labour intensive. There are more transactions to verify. Now only large supercomputers have enough processing power to mine each block. The cost of Bitcoin production is blockchain maintenance. Initially, there were 50 coins created and released to every computer that was the first to mine a block. That number halves every four years until there is a maximum of 21 million units in circulation. And so therefore, there is a finite supply. When that maximum number is reached, approximately by the year 2140, the reward for maintaining the blockchain will be small commissions paid by users every time they send coins. Okay. The effect is distribution and decentralization. One computer might crash, but another can always take its place. If a mine had 51% of the mining power, they could compromise the network but the resources required would be so costly that it would not be worth doing. Uh, Satoshi referred to this uh, as a currency based upon crypto proof rather than trust. The blockchain provides that proof. And so, firstly, we had money backed by things, for example, precious metals. Secondly, we had money backed by political command, that is fiat. Now we have money backed by mathematical proof. So far, the core technology has proven to be unhackable. It has a very high grade of encryption and it is not subject to manipulation and abuse. Here we can see from this first illustration a small specialized computer device that is used to mine Bitcoin. These machines produce a lot of heat so they need a large fan to cool them down. From the second illustration shows a group of these devices linked together to provide more processing power in order to increase the likelihood of being able to mine the first block 
and gain the reward of newly created bitcoins. And from the third illustration, we have an example of these devices linked together to create supercomputers worth of processing power. And it is these mining farms built on this scale that have the best chance of succeeding these days in this sort of endeavour.